There are many reasons as to why desertification is caused, ranging from climate change to soil erosion. Climate change causes the temperature to increase, and most forms of vegetation find it hard to adapt quickly enough, resulting in the majority of vegetation dying and causing the soil to deteriorate. Furthermore, the increases in temperature cause lower levels of water due to the higher rates of evaporation, which leaves plants with less water, and subsequently, they similarly die, leaving desertification to worsen as the soil is baked by the sun. Population growth is significant, as a high population needs more resources like water, food, and energy, which puts strain on the environment, as water is derived from there for food and some energy production. The removal of fuel wood both directly and indirectly causes desertification, as vegetation is directly removed and is then burnt, which aids in the greenhouse effects to cause hotter climates. Overgrazing leads to no nutrients left on the soil, which results in it not being able to support life and leads to less vegetation. Furthermore, overgrazing often leads to animals like mainly cattle to be largely herded and cause the mass release of methane, which is many times more potent as a greenhouse gas. Overcultivation, like overgrazing, uses up the nutrients in the soil through consistently growing the same plants over the same land and leaves the lack of vegetation to grow. This also takes up a large amount of water, which is another aspect to consider. Soil erosion is responsible for causing a lack of nutrients in the soil to result in barren land, as direct sunlight bakes the soil, leaving it infertile for plants to grow and leaves the soil bare. As well as this, it is important to note that the sands of the desert spread and can go over fertile soil to equally render it dry and useless as part of the desert. Despite this, there are strategies to reduce desertification, which include water and soil management, tree planting, and the use of appropriate technology. Water and soil management involves digging pits into the ground, which contains water before it flows anywhere else or spreads too much in the case of rainfall. This causes the nutrients to stay together in the water, instead of letting the water wash all the nutrients away. The benefit to this is that this method is virtually free, and can be controlled, although it does rely on the assumption that there will be large amounts of rainfall. Tree planting is another successful strategy, which involves planting trees which take up water before it spreads out too much with the nutrients it has picked up. The held back nutrients are taken up by plants to be used up instead of being washed away, and this method is also practically free, and can even yield produce to be sold depending on the tree. The main drawbacks are, however, that it takes time to fully grow the tree for it to be effective, and that in some cases, the tree saplings have to be donated by outside bodies. Lastly, the use of appropriate technology is one of the most innovative strategies. A good and famous example involves using stone lines to make sure that water is held back with each line, causing the nutrients that the water is carrying to be held back as well. There are no major drawbacks to this, due to the simplicity and the advantages including how the community is involved, since there is no expertise involved, and how the method is free to do.